Hi everyone, I'm Sal, co-creator of Salt and Pepper Productions. And hi, I'm Pep, co-creator of Salt and Pepper Productions. And we're back with another The Promised Neverland video. Yeah. So today we're going to be discussing Season 2, Episode 2 of The Promised Neverland anime. So let's start with general thoughts on the episode. Pep? This has got to be one of my favorite episodes of the show I have seen so far. I, I, I love I loved this. I love this episode. It's a very beautifully <laughs> done episode. Right. We like you mentioned this before when we first saw the episode, but we actually learn a lot about the world and why it is the way it is. So there's a lot of lore that was revealed here and oh, yeah, we got to know our new characters more. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Uh, oh yeah, it's basically an exposition dump episode, but it's done really well, and there's like a very beautiful. If you've seen the episode, which I hope you have, by the way, if you're watching this, please go watch the episode before listening to us. Because <laughs> spoilers ahead. <laughs> Should have mentioned that earlier. Um, but like it's, it's like the really beautiful um scene near the end. Um, it's really well done, and it's like very like dramatic. And it it's a, represents like for like um character growth for Emma. Mm -hmm. as she's like trying to learn how to survive in the world and dealing with um overcoming sort of um her issue with that flower and with killing things and harming things in order to help others. Right. So let's talk about the new characters, Sonju and Mujika, what were your thoughts on them? Very sweet. Uh, I really like. I um, I really like Mujika. She's very sweet. <laughs> She's a very kind person. Uh, and Sanju seems like very stoic and very, very um, what's the word? He seem he seems like a very kind if kind if not like stoic sort of father esque figure. <laughs> I actually don't to know. To the kids. Yeah, to the kids and to um, I actually don't know. Do we? We don't know the exact relation between between the two of them. If they're like, yeah, we and daughter, husband, I mean, and wife, whatever. Yeah, I feel like if they were father and daughter, then she would have called called him dad instead of Sonju. Yeah. But yeah, that's actually something that's not revealed. Like we don't know what their relationship with each other is, other than the fact that they practice the same religion. Which yeah. is interesting. So it sounds like, uh, at least from the way they mentioned it, that like, because they call they're called heretics. Um, they're called called heretics in their society. So it sounds like they're like a sect of the like religion that the other demons worship. That they, they hmm. and they could even use the same like flower ritual thing of like you put this vampiric plant into the thing's heart. And that, and it drinks the blood. And if it blooms, the gods have accepted, and like clean, uh, like cleaned your sacrifice, so that mm -hmm. um, the so that like you know it can it, you can actually eat it. Your 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 killing of the thing has been justified. And I think that's very interesting that like right. that's sort of the ritual behind it and why they do it. And that's why um, the other demons do that to humans. Is that like oh, if it blooms, well, okay, you you're allowed to eat this, and then. Um, Sanju doesn't do it because for we don't know why what exactly the religious reason is that they can't kill humans I'm assuming it's something like a species of like equal intelligence or something like that or like a fella, a, fe a, a brother in species to the that demon. makes sense that makes sense actually like both intellectual species so maybe they think that humans are more equal to demons than say that bird that they shot at the end of the episode yeah because it, and it's not like they're vegetarians so it's not like they're buddhists right and they can't eat like and they're not like killing anything yeah um, they said we'll eat anything except human flesh yeah I, I really it, it's really interesting i actually wonder I, I actually hope that like they don't those two characters don't just disappear and we never hear from them again i kind of want to like learn more about their backstory and their relation to each other yeah like hopefully we get more of them i mean they're 
prominent in the closing credit sequence and they're also in the opening credit sequence but the conversation they had with the kids about okay so what's the plan i think they said that they were going to go their separate ways once the children reached a certain reach a certain point yeah once they get them out of the so, forest uh and they and they so, get to like the badlands or like whatever area they were telling them about and then they can go then they're going to go their separate ways because mm -hmm. the human humans have their mission and the demons have their mission. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just clearing my throat. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it, it okay. was just like a it was just like a like a mental tick for a second. <laughs> no, go ahead. So, let's talk about the big reveal to Emma and Ray when so Sonju told them about how the world wound up the way it is. So the world has been split in twine. <laughs> right. So oh. in the beginning, like over a thousand years ago, I'm assuming it's more than demons a years and that. like that. Uh, that like he demons and humans have been around each other for longer than a thousand years, but they're divided. Yeah, over a thousand years. years. Yeah, over a thousand years ago, humans and demons roamed the earth together, and they hunted and fought each other until they decided to create a truce in which they created two separate worlds, one occupied by demons and one occupied by humans. And some of the humans that were on the demon side of the border were left as gifts to the demons, so they don't have to hunt humans anymore. They can just them. breed them and basically raise them on farms. And, yeah... Yeah, uh, which, which interesting. kind of implies that the humans who um, came from the, uh, who come to the, like, farm are, like, humans from our side. They're, they're like, uh, come, they come from, like, the other side of the world, sort of. Mm. That or they're not actually humans, which is something I keep repeating. But, like, I don't know, it, may, it adds some interesting, like, details there, especially for me around the book maker guy I forgot his name again uh William Minera yeah William Minera um like Minerva I think yeah Minerva Sorry. yeah it, may, it brings up interesting questions of like well he would if he if he is human and not like some demon activist for like human rights you know no 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 like he's not like part of like the sect of demons who don't eat um demon who don't eat humans um then he would live probably on our side of the world uh which is interesting because they say that no one's ever crossed the border so mm. it, it brings up a lot of like interesting questions about like who he actually is and what he is actually trying to accomplish right and it could, it could yeah go ahead go ahead I'll... so and now that the children know about how the world wound up the way it is they feel very hopeful that, oh, uh, once we find William, we can come up with a plan to free everybody from the farms and then go live in the next world. And if William is human, like, is he, like, was he from the human world initially and then came over to the demon world to try to help humans that are trapped on that side? Or did he always live in the demon world? And he's just trying to help other humans like him. Um, the thing I think is I think um, that William and Nerva might be trying to start a war between the demons and the humans again. Because hmm. the, thing, the, thing, the thing I think is that um, they say no one has crossed like the line at all and that that's an important part of the treaty. So I think right. that it might be that if like anyone ever crosses that line, there's a war. Like, the, the so you think he's trying broken. to use the kids? To so you think he's to cross, trying to to start to like get hostilities going again because he, for some reason, wants to kill off the demons. That's interesting, actually. That would be a, like in last episode we talked about possible twists that or possible reveals they could do with William's character. And that's actually an interesting idea for how he's basically trying to use the kids, help them escape so a war can start. 
Yeah. Like, that would actually be pretty cool. And even then, like, the demons who are, like, chasing the kids might accidentally cross the line when they're, like, chasing them. And then that could be a breach of the treaty, and it looks like the demons are crossing the line, and then humans freak out and attack the demons and all that. I don't know. Hmm. It's I, I it could be I, we have no idea about like the wider relations and if there is actually no contact between them or if there's like a little bit of trade every once in a while or something. That's true. Like nobody crosses the border that we know of. Like yeah. like when, no one crosses when the border, Sonju even like a permit. <laughs> like and when Sonju even told M M Ray nobody has crossed the border. How do you know? Well, I don't know, but I've heard that nobody crosses the border, so a thousand years is a long time, so it's hard to believe that nobody has ever crossed the border before. Yeah, but we also don't know, like, what the border looks like. It could be, like, a giant ravine, or they could be... Or it could be, continent. like, a heavily guarded wall. Yeah. That's or they possible, could, too. Or what they could have done is, like... Let's let's say it's on Earth. They could have put, like given the demons all of North and South America, and given themselves all of Eurasia and Africa. Hmm. And then it's easy. You just don't cross the ocean. <laughs> 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 just don't go swimming. <laughs> uh, but, if if there is an ocean between the human world and the demon world, then that would definitely thing. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have we're gonna spend we're gonna spend at least two episodes at sea. <laughs> mm, they're gonna need to build a boat. <laughs> I, I I fully imagine these kids are going to be able to either make a boat or steal a boat. Yeah. <laughs> these kids these kids they're good at what they do. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like this is what happens, demons, when you purposely breed these children to be as intelligent as possible like they, yeah, they purposely like Einstein pur at 12 <laughs> yeah they purposely save the ultra smart females to be the mothers and to have the kids who end up being ultra smart so yeah, yeah. give them like full blown educations and only and like all that and like like also just just to point out this brings up my question again of if they don't preserve any men how are they how are they keeping this population alive like like we've talked about this before like if norman is alive norman to be alive <laughs> yeah like we've talked about this before like we talked about if norman is alive what story idea could they use for him to be still be alive like you mentioned in our predictions video that maybe they're going to hold on to him for the Tiferi or the Tafari, however it's pronounced. Basically Tafari. this big, <laughs> <laughs> basically this big <laughs> event that's coming up. You think maybe they'll keep him alive longer for that. And I remember Russ said in our season one review discussion video that he thinks Norman might end up becoming a spy if he's still alive and mm -hmm. another possibility is like maybe they're keeping at least some of the boys alive for reproduction reasons I mean it's not like humans reproduce asexually right like even like to right, use a so... parallel of like cattle um, you, you need to keep some bulls alive and uncastrated into adulthood, right. you know, so they can, like, reproduce. Right. right, so... Uh, maybe they'll get into that later on yeah, in I don't, this I don't season. think it's gonna be a major plot point, it's just something I keep bringing up because it's, like, the main way I see them keeping Norman alive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to wait and see. So, <laughs> um, I'm sure everybody agrees with you. I'm sure everybody wants him to be alive. <laughs> I, I mostly want it because I want to see the shock on Emma's face. You're like, alive. and Ray's face, too. Like, Ray's that would be a pretty... Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, I think Emma... Emma could slap him too, maybe. Like, uh, like pretty emotional. Like It could be a double slap at the same time. Just... Boom. Like, slap, slap, back to back. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure he's real, you know? 
and oh, also scold him for basically putting them through that emotional torment. Yeah. You didn't write. I was under, like, severe distress, and I didn't have access to a pencil. You didn't write? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, so, yeah. let's talk about that scene with Gilda later on in the episode where Gilda scolded Emma and Ray. Yeah, that was Well, of... basically all the kids scolded Emma and Ray for Emma basically not telling everybody that she was feeling sick because of her ear and also Ray using himself as bait. Like I think one of the kids even went went that's Ray for you. Always try to run off and die. Yeah, if you don't watch him, he's going to run off and die. <laughs> Yeah, like always trying to get himself like, killed. Like in season one, he tried to kill himself by lighting himself on fire, and then in the first episode of season two, he used himself as bait to try to get rid of the pursuers. Yeah. And basically, Emma and the other kids were talking about how you guys are really important to us, and yeah. we don't want you to suffer. We want you to tell us, like if you're feeling overwhelmed or sick or we don't want you to put your health at risk or your safety at risk for the rest of us like we know you're always worrying about us but we're worried about you as well it's kind of expanding like the main um plot of character like the main sect of characters to like the whole group um mm -hmm. a little bit more so that the um you know they're not just taking care of them but they're also the other group is also taking care of them Right. And, like, you kind of understand why Norman and... Not Norman. Why right. Ray and Emma are like this. They were a part of the original trio, and... Like, they were working on this escape plan from the very beginning of the show. Like, Ray has been working on this since before the show started. Like, he's known about the secret about the house his entire life, so... And since he and Emma were the ones who orchestrated the escape plan, they feel like it's their responsibility to look out for everyone. But as yeah. Gilda pointed out, like, you need to look out for yourselves, too, and you need to let us know that you're going to be okay. Yeah, and then even at, like, the end of the last season, you kind of saw that the rest of the, um, everyone else was basically, like, capable of doing their part and working together. And, right. you know, like, originally, I think one of the main things in the first season was that, like, they all had, the three of them had to learn how to work together to, like, succeed and accomplish what they were trying to do. Like, they couldn't go behind each other's backs. And you also saw that later when Ray and Gilda were mm -hmm. added, that, like, you should tell them the truth. You can't hide that from, hide, hide what's truly going on from them. Uh, and you should tell the truth to them. Right. And then after Right, that, like, they can like, handle the truth. Yeah, and now the whole family is, like, being like, included, and they're all working together. Sorry, I'm... Dead. No, it's okay. And, like... Like, and another interesting thing is, like... Like, Emma and Ray promised that they would try to be more open with them and not hold the burden, like, not carry the burden alone and to be more open about how they're feeling, but... As we saw at the end of the episode, Emma is still keeping things to herself. Like, when she comes back from that hunting trip with Sunju, like, the children could tell that there was something off about her, but she's like, no, I'm fine, everything's fine. And the expression on her face... <laughs> that I like, am not fine. <laughs> like, you can tell, like, like she's still keeping every... She's still holding everything in and not really... Yeah. She's trying. She's trying really hard to provide and be the strong one for everyone else, without allowing them to also support her. She just wants to provide without them supporting back. And I wonder if, I wonder if Emma will at the very least talk to Ray about what happened because I think so. I think so. like she, she learned how to hunt. So she's gonna like bring that up with him, and she brought back the bird. So I think like at least Ray would ask her about that, right? Plus, maybe Ray, maybe it would be easier to talk to Ray because of what they've been through together and how, 
Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 well, they're closer yeah. in age than anyone else, and they've been working on this a lot longer. So they're more... They, they, and they, since yeah. Ray's... And, sorry, you finish your oh, thought. I was going to say, they're more, like, they're more confidants to each other than, you know, everyone else. Right. And since Ray has known the secret about the house, I wonder, does he know about the flower tool and the ritual? Like, does he know the specifics of that? Yeah, I don't know. So maybe... I don't think so, because I don't. He didn't learn it from like seeing uh, anyone die. He just learned it because because he remembered his birth, right? And figured it out from there, which is still one of the most why? <laughs> like really, that's how you figured it out. This kid wasn't already a smart enough thing. <laughs> he had to. He had to like do the one thing you can't do and remember re remember your spawn position. <laughs> <laughs> and um. And. Like when we were watch when I was watching this scene where um Sonju was explaining how to use the flower, he used the word gupna, and I remember when I saw that I was like, Have we heard that word before? So I went back to the first season and saw in the first episode when Norman and Emma were hiding under the truck and the demons were talking to Isabella, like one of the demons said, Is the Gupna done, like talking to the other demons, making sure that you know the flower is fully bloomed and that we can ship Connie off now. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's an interesting thing that, like, uh, at least the way they talked about it, because he's like, "Oh, is it done now?" They kind of like walked away and didn't like talk about it. And I was just like, "Oh, we 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 did it. Now we're just gonna let it bloom and like walk away." While in the last episode, you know, they sat there and they prayed. It was a lot more religious, while the other one was just like, yeah, like they like more they, respectful versus like just kind of industrial. Yeah, like they, yeah, like they stabbed Connie and then they just left her in the truck, and water somehow got into the truck too, so she was soaking wet. So that's true. Like, pay more respect to basically the the little bird. Yeah, like how Emma and Sonju paid more respect to the bird, and Connie was like, like they, the way they, they just, treated they her, and they, like, oh, we're gonna like the way they handled her time. body was, Lot the way they handled respect. her body was, yeah. She was, she, it was, it wasn't like she was a living thing at one point. It was, oh, finally it's done, and you know she's just a piece of meat now. Yeah, like, it's, just a piece of meat it's depressing actually. Yeah. Um... I do. I had to also say I really liked the um the drops in the episode, like with the uh, every when the bow was shot and all that. There was like drop of water into the pool. Yeah. So, like you know the one return the sort of the one droplet returning back to the group of water. Mm -hmm. you know, like the one the one one has returned to the to its source, mm. which is like always poetic and is a very like common metaphor for like one passing into the afterlife in eastern traditions hmm. like there was actually in the first episode of the first season there was water dripping in the tunnel when norman and emma yeah. found connie's body so it could also be a call back to that yeah like how that too but i also think if you want to do like parallels here that that water was probably a lot more dirty and like it was dark and damp, and in this scene, it was like a lot brighter, and it was in nature, and it was right. shown as like more respectful and more poetic. While there, it was kind of dark and terrifying, and uh, and and that was sort of the ambiance of the scene, rather than the kind of sure it's sad that this happened, but it's also respectful for the fact that this animal has died and given its life, and you know they they're paying some respect to it. They're not just treating it like. Oh, it's dead. Okay, just throw it in the back, and then we're good. Right. So, another thing I want to talk about is, while Emma and Sonju were on the surface, there were a lot of butterflies flying around, and at one point we see what looked like a ferret or a weasel yeah. carrying a butterfly in its mouth, and as it runs away, some of the butterfly's wings all torn up fall from its mouth and fall to the ground or to the river. And that instantly reminded me of the opening credit sequence from season one, how 
we would constantly see a butterfly fluttering around and then there would be this flash of white light and then its wings are torn off its body yeah. and when i made i made a video analyzing the opening credits sequence for the promised neverland season one and while doing research on potential symbolism for that video like butterfly symbolism it can represent resurrection or growth development the soul so well, i thought i the, feel um, like original meaning was not because butterflies are very delicate and like beautiful creatures and they're being pinned to the wall kind of how and held in captivity and then and killed kind of like how the children were being killed in the original one well what i was thinking was like so what i was thinking when i made that video was that maybe the butterfly losing its wings could represent the children who died before they could fully development develop or maybe it could represent the destruction of the soul like i remember when russ and i recorded the season one discussion he talked about how he thought isabella and sister crone were interesting because they abandoned their humanity for survival so essentially they sold their souls to survive so the butterfly losing its wings could represent that and i feel with this scene since there are butterflies flying around in this scene while emma and sonju were on the surface i think it could also represent maybe the loss of innocence, like because Emma is now in this position where basically she kills something for the first time and the way she kills it is the same way that Connie died. And yes, you're right that they're being much more respectful of it, but I feel like being placed in that position where now she's the predator and this is her prey, like yeah. she's like, she was even like, well, made her sick we need to grow up. Too. yeah and she was even like like we need to we need to eat to survive but like we're killing things too like so i feel like maybe it could represent like a lot a loss of her, some of her innocence or feel like a part of her feels dead inside like now that she's feels like she's killing. yeah like she feels like especially since she, she killed the bird the same way connie and all her other siblings had died yeah um i would gonna say my interpretation of the butterfly was um sort of representation that like the fragile things in this world don't survive mm -hmm. that like this is a very harsh world um and that if you can't if you can't defend yourself and you can't protect yourself in this world you will you'll you'll just be destroyed like the butterfly was and mm -hmm. the reason the wings fell is it was in my opinion it was symbolic of um shedding um the fra 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 fragility because the wings of butterfly are incredibly fragile so they fell off and it's kind of symbolic of uh emma trying to shed her fragility and trying to be strong in order to protect her family hmm. that's my interpretation interesting Honestly. Let us know what you think the butterflies represent in the comments. Like, okay. what do you think they represent? Yeah, and, and what's your interpretation of that, like, beautiful and amazing scene? <laughs> I like that scene. That actually gave me uh, um, kind of flashbacks to... You remember when we watched uh, Full Metal Alchemist together? Yeah. Remember the uh, island scene? Uh, the island episode where um, Al and Ed get, like, sent off to the island by their teacher when they're younger? Oh yeah, actually. Yeah, that's what I forgot that, about that scene. Actually, yeah, that that scene that's what it reminded me of. In what way? Um, because well, because in the uh, island episode, the whole the thing that happens basically is they're thrown on the island and they're given no food. And you have to figure out how to survive. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like how they're thrown into the wilderness and they have to learn how to survive. Mm -hmm. And. The bit, the point in the um, Full Metal Alchemist episode is that they're connected by a wider web. You know, they're a part of a larger thing. They're part of the whole world. Mm -hmm. um, and that 
when they kill something, to, they're killing it to survive, and that's a part of, and that it's justified in that way, that they're not killing it just because they're killing it to survive, and that one day when they die, they'll also, like, f fade back into the background of the world and be consumed by other things, whether it's, like, just insects eating their body or plants eating their body and be recycled into the world again. Mm -hmm. And in this scene, um, they're based, we see the difference between where they're paying, we see the, them paying respect to the animal and it shows like, okay, yes, it is wrong that they, killing is wrong. She's very upset about it. And he even shows like, well, it's not right to kill, but we have this ritual where, we sort of um, offer the, the animal to the gods, and if the gods say it's okay, we can have the animal, and then it's justified because we are trying to survive. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just kind of saw that as like a parallel where they're, um, I don't know, maybe it's just the fact they killed Like them. respect. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they like, sort of. No, I think I get what you're trying to say. Yeah. Like they're, like they're respecting the circle of life and yeah. like they're not they're they're not like the the other demons when they killed the when they killed the people it's not to survive uh, from what we can see they can eat food, other food just the same as us right they they can eat they can eat regular meat they can eat uh plants and all that and survive and be perfectly healthy um we see that from Sh shino and um the, the uh, girl demon they don't need mm -hmm. human meat to survive. They do it because it's pleasurable for them. It's not right. a, I do this because I need to to survive. It's, I do this because I, I want to. And they also, like, very, as we were talking earlier, they don't respect um, the fact that they're, they don't respect the life of the being they have just killed. Right. It's not a, I'm sorry I killed you, but I need, it, I need, I, I need to survive sort mm -hmm. of thing. It's, I killed you, I don't care. And you're very pleasurable to me, and I can't. And I'm just not going. I'm just, I, you know, when any while, while you die, I'm gonna be over here doing my own thing. And then, uh, when you when you're dead, I'm just gonna toss your body in a thing, and I'm gonna talk about how tasty and delicious you look. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. Also, back to like the little drops falling in the water, and the sort of like the small returning to the large. And again, I think the thing to remember is that like the show comes from like an eastern perspective and in a lot of like eastern um traditions it's viewed as like the one individual instance of like a spirit returns to a larger sort of whole mm -hmm. um that's less common in buddhism which is very common in japan but more common in like uh, a hindu tradition where like sort of the goal of hinduism is to return i'm going to use a very two terms that mean nothing in english because you don't because they're indian terms the the goal is for like the atman to return to the brahman which in english is the individual soul to return to unity with the universal soul mm -hmm. and so I, I liked that representation of sort of like oh because when the animal died the drop falls it returns to the to the uh the the it returns to its original um, location. It, the 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 outgrowth right, like, of it returns to the original. If that makes sense. Like how, like how what Ed and I were talking about, like yeah, they when we die, our earth. bodies decompose, and, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. Those were my parallels that I saw, and I I, I really liked I really liked the two parallels there. Sorry, I'm right. <laughs> referencing everyone. Everyone who's just like, why is this person talking about another anime? <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was, no, that that's was, actually uh, that's actually really interesting. Very deep, actually. Um, I try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I say stupid jokes like the one I'm gonna say later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh, at one point in the episode, I think it was relatively early on in the episode. We cut back to the pursuers, and they find his first episode. We didn't talk about this in our other video, but in the first episode, Ray carved a message in a tree before running off. And I'm guessing he wrote that message in case one of the kids came looking for him. Yeah. Basically letting them know, I'm being chased by the pursuers, just keep going. 
head to this location, find William Minerva. I think I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens because um the pursuers now know where they're going. So I wonder if um Ray is going to realize his mistake at any point that like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Because I think the pursuers are just going to go to that location and wait for them. If they realize what the numbers mean. I'm sure they will. I'm I'm sure these people are pretty well skilled in this, and they're going to like immediately like notice that these are like coordinates. Mm-hmm. They are coordinates. They're they're numbers and letters. They look like coordinates. Right, and which begs the question: Are they going to get to William before the kids do? I don't know, because I... See, that's the issue. I don't know who William is, or what he is, or where he is. <laughs> or if he's even still there. Right. Um, Because, like... Because it, it brings up so many other questions about, like... Based on what we know, it doesn't make sense for William and Nerva to be a human who lives where he, he says he lives. Hmm. Because they say, oh, there's no... Because the, um, the uh, Senju even mentions, oh, there's not very many wild humans roaming around anymore. Or there's basically none. Not on this right. side of the world, at least. Right. So it makes me wonder, like, who is he? And where is he? And what is going on, on exactly? Mm-hmm. Also, I think I, I, I'd have to rewatch, but I want to kind of see what that coordinate looks like on that map he, draw, he brought out. Right. Cause it seemed like there was um, like it was. It looked like it was just a piece of land, like in the middle of like a plain or something. Mm-hmm. So that makes me really wonder what like exactly is going on. I don't know. We 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 will see, but the big mystery of who William Minerva is it still remains. Mm-hmm. So in this episode, they talked about how basically the reason why Emma and Sonju went to the surface was to scout the area, examine the river, because he said that they would have to go up to the surface because they're traveling underground to avoid the pursuers, but they're going to have to go up to the surface to cross the river. So maybe in the next episode, do you think there'll be an ambush or something on the river, or...? Hmm, maybe. I mean, we did hear about, like, those tribes of wild demons roaming around, which... Brings up the question of why are they referred to as wild demons? Um, hmm. I, I think that's a very interesting thing. Of they're referred to specifically as wild demons, which brings up a lot of questions about their society and what's going on with these demons. Why are they wild? <laughs> are they feral? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the horse and demons like, are? <laughs> like, I mean, the horse demons could still talk, so. Yeah, but maybe maybe they're like um, maybe like when maybe they're they're like specific ones who've been like taught and trained, but the rest of them are just roaming around in the wilderness. I don't know. I I just I'm just really curious because it seemed it seemed like they were like a at least mildly industrial society, but now it's starting to seem like they're um kind of primitive, like that they're living in like wild tribes and stuff like that. I don't know. Demon, the demon society just is another whole bunch of what is going on? How does this work? What are the what are the intricate details of this? Give me the world building. <laughs> <laughs> I want more. Inject it right into my veins. <laughs> now I know why you loved this episode so much because you're all for the world world building. <laughs> I, I don't know. I find it fascinating. I love the way they're revealing like the way the world works and all the little intricate details. I don't know. I'm nerding out about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else is there to talk about? We talked about going hunting. We talked about Emma and Ray keeping things to themselves and how Emma is still keeping things to herself by the end of the episode. Like how she doesn't want to talk about hunting the animal. Yeah, I can and... imagine it was probably pretty traumatic for her. Yeah. I wonder actually yeah, which... if she's going to end up like hunting other animals, or if she's going to show Ray how to hunt. Yeah, I wonder, like, in the next episode, like, will they skip ahead to show that Emma 
has gotten used to hunting animals and it doesn't bother her as much anymore? Or is this something that they're going to spend a lot of time on, like, showing her get past that? Or I think we might get a little bit of her getting past it and then... It's not. I don't think it's going to be a major thing. I think it's just going to be like um, an episode of two with her development, and then she's going to be okay with it because she wants to protect her family. That's my mm-hmm. take on it. But it could also be they're going to cut, and she's like, I, I don't. I think cutting to her just being completely okay with it would be a little too jarring. So there needs to be a little bit of development on it. But I also think mm-hmm. she will be okay with it in the end. Or at least okay. we'll find some justification for it. Right. She'll probably talk to Ray about it, and Ray will like help her work through it, and then maybe Gilder will slap her again and help her work through it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be funny, actually. Like, Gilda got really intense in that scene. Like, yeah. I feel like in the previous season, and even in the previous episode, she's a much more, I guess timid character like she's not yeah. super intense so that scene was actually really surprising yeah well i mean it's really nice it's character development like you can right. see her growing and her trying to fill her role as well and trying to help everyone and mm-hmm. all that you gotta love gilda she's sweet mm-hmm. she's trying to do her part and i'm glad yeah. she's got soup <laughs> yeah no, like soup. it's not allowed <laughs> Speaking of soup, like, at the beginning of the episode, like, Emma and Ray reacting to the revelation that Sonju and Mujika are demons, and also seeing how the other kids seem completely okay with that. Yeah. Like, and, oh, well, they like, had especially the first... To it, because they're probably, like, yeah, they like probably they helped s- them and all that. Sorry. Yeah, like, and Don even said that they already had lunch with them, and the lunch was perfectly fine, so they definitely had a lot, spent a lot of time with them already, this and... This wasn't Gilda, so we're good. <laughs> Gilda wasn't for dinner, so yeah, and... we're good. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna stop making Gilda is soup jokes. <laughs> and, like... Like, with the first dinner scene, like, you could tell, like, Norman, not Norman, like, I keep saying Norman, Ray and Emma, like, you could tell, they didn't want to touch their food at first, like, you could tell that they lost yeah. it. They were worried about but then when, person. Yeah, and, but then they went, but when they ate it, they found out, oh, it's actually really good. Delicious. Yeah, and then Ray turns out to be an amazing cook. <laughs> That was funny. Like, yeah, it was. what is this? It's my cooking. What? But you just threw in a bunch of random stuff. Hmm. I guess I'm just that good. <laughs> Classic Ray. Yeah, that is that. That's basically Ray in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so that was actually a nice montage we got in the middle of the episode with the children learning how to cook and prepare food, and also collecting herbs and stuff. Yeah. It was very nice. It was a very good episode. Um, if you haven't watched it and you've made it to this point in the episode, one, why? Two, go watch the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they've seen it. I just spoiled like the whole like thing of the episode at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I was really good. I very much enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it it's probably on my list of my, at the top of my uh, favorite episodes in the series. Right. So, do you have any final thoughts about the episode, or what do you think will happen next? I have no clue because, like, we we basically went through the entire. We these last two episodes have gotten everything from the trailer done. Um, yeah, I, that I, that's true. I don't know if they're going, I don't know, they're probably going to be continuing to work their way to the forest, to like the end of the forest and be leaving. And right, because they need, journey. yeah, because they need to take a roundabout way to avoid the demons. They need to, like, they can't just go in a straight line to William, they have to take a more roundabout route, and that leaves us to wonder, like, Sonju said that they were going to go to a barren piece of land. So, which makes us, 
wonder what will they encounter in the upcoming episodes and will they run into the pursuers again especially since the pursuers found that message and how do you think the children will react when they found out that ray left that message i think someone's going to i think gilda's gonna slap him and go stupid (laughs) yeah i don't know um I don't think they're gonna. I I, I think Ray did it. I think it was. I, I actually I want to rewatch and see if it's actually the right coordinates because I feel like Ray might be smart enough to like have put the wrong coordinates in. I mean, I think in the first step, like in the first episode, they cut to the number and it looks like the right coordinates. Like in, like I'd have to rewatch the second episode. Like I, I don't. I feel I like don't that would actually be very clever. I feel like that would be pretty clever if he put in the wrong coordinates, but I... It's a definite Ray move, but I don't think he did it. Hmm. I don't think he did, but it's something I, w- I, I kind of want to double check because it sounds like something Ray would do. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, so, Sal. Yeah? I bought these shoes the other day. I don't know what they laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. <laughs> Not that good. Uh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I also had to get rid of my vacuum cleaner. It was uh, just gathering dust. <laughs> okay, that one got a little bit of more of a laugh. I mean, I, I got that one. I feel like you told me that one that one before though too like I probably have i have <laughs> i i only i only have like the same set of jokes <laughs> just use them on repeat <laughs> yeah so i i think i think that's all for this week but uh, i guess we'll be back next week with um the next episode excited for episode three I hope I hope it's as good as the uh, last episode. <laughs> yeah, and like you said before, basically everything that happened in the trailer was covered in the first two episodes. So yeah, we're in complete anticipation now. <laughs> so we have no idea what's going to happen next. Yeah, I, I think they're going to leave the, start leaving the forest, and I feel like um, uh, Shiro and the uh, demon girl, one of them is going to end up hurt, or something's going to happen because they're going to get attacked. Uh, and they're going to end up staying with the kids for some reason. Yeah, like, I feel like it's too soon for them to split up. Yeah, it, they they have to have some reason for them to stay together after that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I have no idea. Maybe they will separate, and then they'll just reappear later on, like, uh, like Norman will. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Who knows? What are you talking about, maybe? Norman's definitely going to reappear. <laughs> I have faith. <laughs> He'll reappear in one way. He'll at least get mentioned later. Yeah, like they'll de- they'll definitely mention him. Yeah. Like you know how in the last two episodes of season 1, Emma and Ray saw hallucinations of Norman while they were escaping? Yeah. Do you think there will be more scenes like that where basically Ray or Emma is alone, and basically they're just, and they imagine that Norman is there, and they're talking to him about whatever birding is on their mind. Like, maybe maybe Emma could talk to imaginary Norman about what it was like killing that bird, because since Norman was with her when she discovered Connie's body, like, maybe it would be easier for Norman to understand, or at least imaginary norman to understand i think that would be pretty cool especially since uh, though i can imagine her also imagining norman getting spiked by it i think she's gonna because they they keep opening with like nightmares uh so i am can imagine that she has a nightmare about like norman getting um rose stabbed and dying Mm. that that's my prediction that's what's gonna be the next nightmare that she has right so far every episode has opened with like her having a nightmare well, not every episode. Well, like, two episode... Two. T- well... 
Didn't yeah, she had a bit of a nightmare at the beginning and then like she woke up in the cave. Or is that Ray? It was one of them. Someone had a nightmare. Um No, like um No, there weren't any nightmares in episode one or two. Like I remember in episode two of season one, which was basically the episode after she and Norman found Connie's body and discovered the truth about the house. She had a nightmare of Connie sitting on a platter on top of a table, and then a demon came up from behind Emma yeah. and that attacked the beginning her. Beginning of episode one, she had a nightmare of them all running down a tunnel. Um, no, I, I think that was I... meant to. That was meant to foreshadow the chase that happened later on in the episode. Yeah, I thought that was like a nightmare or something. Um, or a dream. Like I thought that. Like, yeah, I think I thought that too, but then you realize, oh, it's basically the same chase later on in the episode. It was, it was like a little sneak peek for what was to come, I guess. I guess. I, th I thought of it as like a, her like a personification of like their nightmares and their, like the, th the, the her, her fear. Cause they're like, oh, get away, get away, get away. And then like, they, they don't make it through out from the tunnel. But no, but she even says like, Come on, just keep running. It's like tag, and then we see the monster behind them. Yeah, but that, I'm pretty sure that was supposed to represent the demon, the demons killing them, and then not making it out to like it's actually escape, and then like they they never actually get out. They're so close that they never make it. I don't know. That was that was my interpretation. I thought it was a dream, but I, I guess your yours also makes sense. Oh well, uh, we could double check. Yeah. We could double check later. We'll have a we'll have a fifteen minute argument about it next ne next time we next time we meet for this. Actually, you know what? Uh, if you're still listening and you haven't gotten bored with our ramblings yet, um, leave a comment down below of what of what you think the um uh see the, that like tunnel sequence was. Was it a, a preemination or was it a dream slash nightmare? Or not like preemination. In... That was but <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Like, it was a preview to what was to come later on in the episode, and then by the time, and then by the time we get to the middle of the episode and the chase scene happens, you're like, oh, so that's what we saw at the beginning. I mean, it could be both foreshadowing and a dream. Like, both can be a part of it. Like, it could be a dream that also foreshadows, um, what what like, what's to come in the episode. Mm hmm I don't know. I, 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 I guess we'll leave that up to popular opinion in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got a little sidetracked. Yeah, no, a little bit, but I I think that's the episode for, for uh, today. Right, uh, so... Hey, uh, if, you if you liked what you heard, and, um, give us a like, and uh, maybe subscribe and comment, please. <laughs> don't be afraid to like and subscribe check out our other videos if you haven't already be sure to share this video and hopefully we'll see you again soon All right. bye take care bye bye